G'day everyone, I'm Dave, and today we're talking about maintaining your router bits and router blades. There's a lot of different cleaners that are out there, specific to blades, and there's a lot of suggestions even online. A lot of them do work wonders. The only problem is some of them as well do damage to your blades. Make sure that when you check your product, that it's safe on all metal. And with the cleaners, you have to be very careful because every one of these bits quite often has a carbide blade attached. Sometimes it's silver soldered, sometimes it's braised, sometimes it's your nether methods. And depending on which cleaner you use, it could actually damage that bond, which means as that's spinning at high speed, you risk that carbide bit come flying off and becoming a high speed projectile. Saw blades, whether they're a table saw, miter saw, circular saw, it's the same idea. They have this small little carbide bit that's adhered on to each one of those blades, carbide being a harder steel and it'll take the wear and tear. So when you're selecting a solution, make sure whichever solution you do select, whichever brand you find works best for you, that it can be used for cleaning saw blades and router bits such that you don't risk that falling apart. And to clean it, we find, again, whatever is an approved cleaner, you look at what the mix ratio is and you find yourself a nice mixing container. In this case, all you did was grab a case for a router bit because no sense making up a lot of solution. We'll just mark every half inch on here so half, one, one and a half, two, which gives me my four markings. This is a one to three mix ratio, one marking up to one marking of the cleaner. So in this case, it did a little too much. I can just pour a little back. We'll just fill up the remaining to get the proper mixture with water. Once we have that, let's we'll take our router bit and drop it inside and let that soak for 10, 15 minutes. And once that's soaked, and again, the amount of time is dependent on the product, you just pull it out at that point. And while I soak that complete with bearing and everything in place, what we'll do at this point is just take a soft bristle brush. Uh, in this case, it's a brass brush, and we'll just clean that off if there's any dirt onto it. So anytime you have a rotating part, a blade or anything like that, or a bit, you look at which way it rotates, and it's always gonna rotate towards the, the carbide, and that's direction as well that we have to turn the set screw, or in this case, the bolt, to remove it. So as we take this screw out, we always have to be careful. Because sometimes these bearings, the, the actual balls that are inside the raceway, are loose, and they just have like a washer on each side. So there's always a risk that they might fall out, and in which case it's always good to do this over a tray. Remove the bearing, double check that there's no washer underneath, and we'll just set that aside. First thing to do is look at your shaft and to see if there's any kind of scoring onto it um, from not being properly locked in or actually rotating what was locked. And we're gonna look at the carbide and we're gonna actually feel with our fingernail to see if we feel any burrs. If there is any burrs on here and they're just a small minor little burr, we can look at actually removing those burrs. We can touch it up either with diamond plates and these ones come in various grits. I just wrote grits on the back so don't forget, like it's 260, there's a 180 grit and a 360 grit or you can go out and buy various grits as well for our fine knife sharpening i like quite often using the oil stones because when i'm finished i like to have oil residue rather than water residue just so we don't get rust so for this if i want to just touch it up i can just either soak my stone a little bit with a bit of oil i'm just going to use a three in one but there is oil specifically for for these stones but Three in one is what I'm gonna to use to coat this when I'm all done for storage. And I already got the stone well soaked in three in one. And I'm just gonna actually go across it just a little bit. Of course, with the stone, sometimes it's hard to get in because of the thickness. That's why these come in handy. The diamond plates you can either use with water or even with oil. And the diamond plates allow you to get into it a little closer because of the thickness. And the same thing, lay it flat on the carbide. And we're not trying to get it actually sharpened at this point. What we're trying to do is get rid of any burrs that might be there. Next thing we're gonna do is just reassemble the bearing. The bearing, you definitely want to recoat back up with oil. Just thread that in. And when you tighten them up, I just go literally with in, holding in my hands and hand snug. Because the way they set these up, as that spins, it'll actually tighten that even more. And if I'm gonna be storing this, I'll actually coat the whole shaft with oil and I'll store that in a plastic holder. I don't like storing it in wood because that's what happens sometimes with this. 
they'll get a bit of rust from just the moisture in the wood. And of course, number one, most important, is making sure whatever product you're using for cleaning is either approved by the manufacturer of your router bit or the cleaner itself recommends their use for router bits and router blades. Thanks for watching. Have any comments again, leave them below and we'll see you next video.